What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're going to check out 11 WWE wrestlers with the lowest percentage of wins in 2022, man. Yes, we know that uh, the matches are predetermined ahead of time, but you still got to take into consideration the uh, wrestlers win loss uh, record. I know AEW does take into effect, like they do count the wins and the losses, which I do appreciate. It gives it that that kind of a realism that I, I, I think wrestling can definitely benefit from because it only makes sense if someone's in a uh, situation where they're on a win streak. It's cool to probably announce that and you can kind of build up like this person being the next guy up for a major title i wish wwe would incorporate that so you know you can kind of see have a a, a a visual aid of oh this person's been winning a lot so maybe they should be in line for a title opportunity so maybe at some point they do that in the future i do like that AEW does have that so the wins and losses do somewhat matter in AEW. so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support man let's see who has the lowest win percentage in wwe so far now, there are 11 wrestlers in WWE oh. currently with an atrocious win-loss record for the year of 2022. Some of the names on this list are credible stars and one is even a former WWE champion. Now, while certain people may argue that I'm willing to bet Seth Rollins is probably one of those individuals. Now, wins and losses don't matter in pro wrestling, they are key to making a character legitimate. Because if they never secure a pinfall win, it ultimately means nothing when another wrestler defeats them. Yeah. And join us now as WrestleMania looks at 11 wrestlers currently in WWE with the worst win-loss record. Let's see who is at the top of the, the win-loss, well, who's at the top of the, the losing losing record be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists also check out wrestlemia.co.uk and the non-wrestling channel incredible number 11 natalia mm. natalia is the most tenured woman on the wwe roster throughout her time in the company natalia has been used in a number of roles Natalia is a former women's champion, but it's clear that WWE sees her value in putting over younger talent, yeah. and this is especially the case in 2022. So far this year, Natalia has lost a shocking 84% of her matches, Damn. there appears to be no sign of this record improving. Now, Natalia is a fantastic in-ring talent, but as more and more talented female stars come up from NXT, Natalia is just going to fall further down the card. Number 10, Shane. I can see that. I can see they use... They pretty much use Natalia to like enhance other women wrestler talent. And the fact that Shayna Baszler's on this list is fucking disgustingly sad. Baszler. Oh, now, man. at one point in time, Shayna Baszler was presented as one of the most dominant forces in WWE. Facts. However, when Baszler was called up to the main roster, WWE management quickly fell out of favor with her, and this subsequently resulted in the former NXT Women's Champion losing a push. So far in 2022, Baszler has lost 86% of her matches. Damn. This is a far cry from a record in NXT where she was barely ever pinned. Yep. Uh, there is some hope for Baszler now that Triple H is running WWE creative. Hopefully. And the game being a huge fan of Baszler's work, a push could be on the horizon. Hopefully this dire win-loss record will change. Hopefully. Number 9, Sabi Zayn. That's crazy. But without a doubt, one of the most entertaining <laughs> acts on WWE television currently is Sami Zayn. In 2022, Zayn joined forces with Roman Reigns and the Usos well, and Sammy, created bro. some memorable TV as a result. Zayn would also be given a huge spotlight at WrestleMania 38 as he would take on Johnny Knoxville in an insanely entertaining match which exceeded all expectations. But while Zayn is presented well nah, seemingly on a weekly basis, <laughs> there is an issue with Zayn's credibility as a top star. So far in 2022, Zayn has lost a shocking 87% of his matches and it's virtually impossible to see Zayn secure a victory on TV. And it's one of those things where I know some people want him to go for Roman at some point. But once again, you got to take in consideration, my man's been losing a lot. Uh, I do feel like it, they could maybe set him up to maybe be one of the people uh, to take away the tag team championships from the Usos. I think that would be a nice little storyline. Maybe he partnered up with Kevin Owens. I would be down for that. But as of right now, would it be cool for him to be the guy to defeat Roman? Maybe, depending on... How they book it, but as it stands, he he's a guy that can't really get any wins right now, you know, on his own. This definitely needs to change, and hopefully the new head of WWE creative Triple H looks to give Zayn some more wins. Number Pass. eight, Carmella. 
Carmella started off 2022 strong as she would enter 2022 as one half of the women's tag team champions alongside Zelina Vega. However, this unfortunately didn't result in Carmella winning matches on a regular basis. So far this year, Carmella has lost 87% of her overall matches. Damn. And it seems like WWE prefer to use Carmella to put over other talent whilst trying to convince the audience that Carmella is a credible star thanks to her being the first ever female winner of the Money in the Bank briefcase. It also doesn't help that Carmella is currently on the injured list, so there is a slim chance of this percentage of improving I before the year is out. Injury, uh, Number 7. List. Tamina a 2021 was by far the best year of Tamina's WWE tenure. She would finally win gold in WWE when she captured the women's tag titles alongside Natalia, and the fans finally began to gravitate towards her. However, in 2022, Tamina has had a meaningless and lifeless year. She's lost 90% of her matches oh. and has mainly been used on WWE main event as well as random 24-7 segments. Not random She's now in a tag team with Dana Brooke, segments. but it seems unlikely that the duo is ever going to be taken seriously for the yeah, tag titles. Most likely they Number six, <laughs> Nikki Ash. Oh, Upon yeah. debut, I, I just want them to get rid of this gimmick, bro. Please just get rid of this. I can't take it seriously at all. I just... I, I know we've had the superhero gimmicks, you know what I'm saying, in the past. Like, you got the, the hurricane. And he was funny, at least. You know, you couldn't take him seriously, but at least he was funny. She's not funny. It's not entertaining. I just want her off my screen every time I see her. Doing a superhero persona, Nikki Ash was pushed to the moon in WWE. She was given the Money in the Bank briefcase and cashed it the next night on Raw to win the women's title. Which was stupid how that set up. Everybody's fighting on the ladder and they just don't see someone in blue taking the briefcase while everyone's fighting each other on ladders. Sadly, her reign was short-lived and whilst there's been some highlights since then, including winning the women's tag titles with Rhea Ripley, Nikki has moved dramatically down the card. Facts. In 2022, the former women's champion has lost 93% oh, of her matches. And whenever a match featuring her is advertised, fans have come to expect that she won't come out with a victory. Yeah, she's lose. Number five, Shotzi. When Shotzi was first called up to the main roster, there was a ton of buzz surrounding her. She had a unique look, and her entrance, which previously involved her entering on a tank, was a surefire way to connect to the younger members of the audience. Yeah. She had the it factor, but this has failed to translate to in-ring presentation. In 2022, Shotzi has lost 93% of her matches, which is a disappointing statistic. The former NXT stars actually lost every single match in 2022, with the exception of two singles matches. Damn! But Triple H has to realize the potential in her and present her in a manner fitting for such an ex- Well, they did bring her tank back, so hopefully we see her going to a upward traje trajectory in the win-loss column. Excellent character. Number four, r oh, One of no, the most reliable and genuinely entertaining characters on WWE television right now is R-Truth. Yeah. Truth hasn't really done anything meaningful on screen in 2022. This has resulted in him having a loss of a total of 96% of his overall matches. Damn. Now with the rumors circulating that WWE could be removing the 24-7 title from existence, Truth is going to need to find another storyline to focus on. Although he's now 50 years old, he still has a ton to offer WWE, and his in-ring work is still at the level it was a decade ago. Yeah, the thing about R-Truth, he is one of those mid-card acts. He's hilarious. He's so entertaining to watch. <laughs> he's probably the only reason why the 24-7 championship actually had some type of life. It was because of R-Truth, bro. Oh my God, the dude is hilarious. I think he used to call it uh, the 7 Eleven Championship or something like that. <laughs> the 7 Eleven Championship. He made it funny. Outside of our truth, no one cares about the 24 7 Championship. So uh, it, it makes sense. He doesn't really win that many matches, not really featured as much on Monday Night Raw on SmackDown. So it, it makes sense. But he's, he's a solid. Always a solid mid Carter that will have you actually laughing. It would be fun if the new WWE regime possibly revisited Truth's infamous 2011 heel run, as this would help Truth to get some much needed TV time. The little Jimmy Number stuff, three, man. Bobby Roode. Oh, man. During his time in NXT, he was Robert so great. Roode was the number one guy <laughs> on the brand. Facts. However, when Roode was called up to the main roster, fans quickly lost interest in his work, and it wasn't before long that WWE threw him into random makeshift tag teams. So far this year, Rude has literally nothing whatsoever to do on screen other than being presented as Dolph Ziggler's friend. Ziggler received a substantial push earlier this year when he would win the NXT title, but the same push wasn't afforded to Rude. 
In 2022, he's lost 96% yeah, of his matches, man. winning just one singles match. Uh, this is cold. downright terrible, and the fortunes of Rude will hopefully turn around under the new regime. Hopefully, bro, because Bobby Rude was that guy in NXT. Glorious! That entrance alone had him super over, bro. It was evident during Rude's time in NXT just how much Triple H valued him. There must be a reason why Triple H hasn't decided to reintroduce Rude on TV since he took over, and hopefully the game is working hopefully out a plan that will bring Bobby the old Rude, Rude back to either Raw or SmackDown. Please. Number two, Sonya Deville. Well, Sonya Deville has spent a strong portion of 2022 in a role as an on-air authority figure in WWE. This is a role which Deville has received widespread praise for, as she's had great timing and presence as a villainous character. In May of 2022, WWE decided to remove Deville from this position and have her be reintroduced as a full-time member of the women's division. This was a bizarre decision, as Deville was so great in an established role, and there really wasn't a space in the women's division for her. Nevertheless, WWE followed through with plans to see Deville become an in-ring competitor again, and so far in 2022, she's lost a staggering 96% of her Damn. matches. Deville has no credibility as an in-ring competitor, and it's a shame that WWE decided to pull Deville from delivering the best work of her career. Which is crazy because Deville, I didn't even know she trained in MMA. She can actually fucking go. Uh, of course, MMA doesn't always translate into wrestling, but the fact that they don't really talk about that much that could really play into her character but when you see her out there you you nine times out of ten you think she's about to lose the match and number one jinder mahal oh. in 2017 jinder mahal shocked the world when he defeated randy Orton to become the wwe champion now, the reason that this was so shocking was that mahal was wwe's resident jobber and he went from his lower card role to wwe champion seemingly overnight yeah when mahal eventually dropped the title to aj styles in november of 2017 he quickly moved down the card Mahal has never once been considered for another run with a world title, and there are no signs that he's ever going to be pushed again. In 2022, Mahal has the single worst win-loss record out of anyone in the entire company. He's lost 97% of his matches, Damn. which is an insane statistic when you consider that this man was once facing off against the likes of Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura on major pay-per-view events. That's but they crazy, have folks, man. That, that is pretty insane. I ain't know he lost that many matches. Granted, I, I mean, we don't really see him on TV too much on the main roster like that. Um, but yeah, maybe some of these guys can, you know, under Triple H's regime can get some more wins uh, and maybe move up on the card. We will see. But this was a pretty informative video. A lot of women on this video. A lot of women can't catch no dubs uh it seems like they come off more as jobbers if anything else so but yeah man comment down below let me know do wins and losses matter in wrestling how do you guys feel about that me personally i feel like it is important to have those categories at least talked about so you could potentially see who's really out there getting w's who's out there getting losses and and how does that affect their character and their dynamic with everybody else so let me know y'all how y'all feel about wins and losses in professional wrestling but i appreciate y'all kicking in with me road to 100k appreciate y'all i just I, I fucked up the outro y'all know y'all know y'all know the outro man i appreciate y'all kicking with me i'll see y'all on the next one <laughs> peace i fucked that up